Hi there, it's Alex and welcome to the Geeks Table. Just eight months ago, I've been standing at this table and unboxing the iMac with Visa mount. So once the studio display was announced, I was already sure which configuration I'm going to order. So I already have a Visa stand waiting for the display. So let's see how fast it will be for me to assemble it. So while we are unboxing the display, let's talk about why would you actually want the configuration with a Visa mount? So, well, it's all about versatility. Visa is a standard, so you're able to choose any mount you wish. It could be something like this. It could be a double mount with a laptop, so you actually can put a laptop close to your display and it will be on the same height. I actually have it at my workplace and I love it. It could be a wall mount, well, it's up to you to decide. And also the adjustable stand that you can order as an extra option is unable to rotate the studio display, but many mounts and including this one can, so you can put it vertical. In terms of price, of course, the cheapest option is the display with the standard stand because this model is just with a Visa plate and you are unable to put it anywhere, you have to invest in a stand as well. But again, we're back to versatility. The mount that I have at my desk is like 50 euro. This one is more pricey, it's like 130 probably. And it's up to you, how much would you like to invest in a stand? You can invest in something cheap and then buy something else once you get more money or you'll find a better option. All right, let's take the cover off. I already know that the cord is not detachable. That's a shame. I don't even remember any other display that had an undetachable cord. Like, so outdated. All right, so we got rid of the cable cover. Now we are all here and I will mount the stand. By the way, if you're interested in how long screws do you need, or how much space do you need between the display and the wall. I will cover that in the review, so stay tuned. But now it's just an initial setup. Okay, so now it's the moment of truth. And let's put it here, all right. Oh, that's quite heavy. Okay, so we'll need, we definitely will need to adjust it here. Oh, and also in this small box, we have the Thunderbolt cable. I think it's a good idea to set it up right now so we won't spend any extra time on cable management. And I already noticed that if we want to do a proper cable management and hide the Thunderbolt port, then it will be quite short because if we put it like this, this is all we have. So I guess that the Thunderbolt will go out. Now a finishing touch. And finally, so now I will just bring my laptop and play around with this display for a couple of weeks and share my thoughts later. But for you, it will be just a matter of seconds. And if you are interested in some particular things, please use the time codes, I won't judge you. So we're back. I should say it was very exciting to test the display and I have a lot to share. But first of all, a few follow-ups on the Visa mount. It completely destroys the identity of the screen because when it's mounted, you can't really tell if it's the studio display or something else. Just yet another screen. Also on the back, the logo is half covered with a stand. So if you want to boast about having an Apple screen, then don't buy the VESA option. The studio display supports VESA standard 100 to 100 and you'll need M4 to 10 mm screws, which are not included with the screen but they're usually included with every Visa stand. The screen weighs around 5.4 kilos depending on the configuration, so choose your stand accordingly. It should support that weight. Mine is from Amazon Basics, it's pretty stable and if I shake the table, it nearly doesn't wobble, which is great. If you wish the screen to be as close to the wall as possible, then mind the minimum distance of 12 centimeters. But of course, for each stand, it might be a different value. And if you plan to mount the screen to the wall, 
then the minimum gap between the wall and the screen should be around 6 to 7 centimeters. This will allow both Thunderbolt and power cables to bend without damage. And once it's done, I can adjust the height, the tilt, and also, wait for it, I can rotate the screen and it will rotate automatically. How cool is that? Okay, I've promised to share a hack on how to rotate the main screen of your MacBook or an iMac and especially iMac users with a VS amount would appreciate it and that's quite simple. If we check the screen settings, it won't offer any rotation option for the main screen. So let's close it. And now let's click on the Apple logo and then hold the option key and while holding it, click on the system preferences. Now let's click and hold the option key again and click on the displays. And now if we go to the display settings, we will have the rotation option on the main screen, which we can now change. Hit a like if you didn't know that. Okay, back to the studio display. And as you may know, it has a microphone built in, it has a camera built in, it has speakers built in and a screen built in, but no buttons. So how does it all work? Well, to control the brightness, you may use the control center. And if you click on the display, it will show two toggles to control the brightness individually. Also, you may use the main toggle depending on which screen you are in right now. And here I'm on the studio display changing its brightness. And now I'll switch to the MacBook screen and now I'm changing its brightness. Oh, and if you still have the touch bar, then you'll have two brightness toggles instead of one. I do miss the touch bar. The speakers and the microphone are shown as standalone sources, so you can select those in the settings or separately in any app as you normally would do. And if you're using the camera, the control center will now show this nice button where you can enable or disable the center stage per app. The center stage works better than on the iPad, by the way, and there I always had an issue where it would just cut my neck and show just my head and it looked weird. But with the studio display, it's much better now. And by the way, let's have a look at the cameras. Right, we have three web cameras, one from Intel MacBook Pro, one from M1 Max MacBook Pro, and one from Studio Display. And which image do you like more? Let me know down in the comments. It's because I guess it's very personal. Also, you can compare the microphone quality and say which one is better for you. So also, I guess that Intel MacBook Pro has a more contrast image, but the image is more dark compared to the M1 Max MacBook Pro and Studio Display. Okay, and now I've turned all the lights off except just one. So we are in a relatively dark environment and also we can compare the noise reduction and also the picture quality in quite dark environment. I can turn off completely all the light and this is what we see with just the light of the displays, the three displays. Well, all of the web cameras are like horrible. <laughs> I guess only the M1 Max MacBook Pro can show some kind of my face, but it looks very creepy. So I will just return some of the lights. So yeah, well, this is the test of the cameras and the microphone of three devices. And I'm really, Excited to hear from you guys, what do you think? Now let's talk about ports and cables. So it has a Thunderbolt port and three USB-C cables on its back. And you might want to use the Thunderbolt one for connecting your Mac to the screen. The cable is included, thanks Apple for being so generous, but unfortunately it's just one meter long. So it might be not enough for super clean cable management, especially if you are with a Visa option. Surprisingly, I was able to connect the screen via a USB-C cable that supports video transfer. It was like two meters long. And good thing it's a cheaper alternative and it works, but bad thing, the other three USB-C ports on the back won't work in this case. So the USB-C ports, what are they capable of? And first of all, the first thing that I did, I connected my LG display to one of the USB-C ports here and it didn't work. So if you wanted to have a chain of displays connected to one to another, no luck here. 
A USB-C to audio jack adapter works fine. You can even select it in the audio output and the settings. USB-A adapters with flash drives work with no problem. Oh, and even the Ethernet adapter works fine. So you can have Ethernet connected to your display and once your Mac is connected to the screen, you gain a faster internet connection. And of course we can connect SSD drives to the studio display as well. And here I've made a few measurements of my Samsung T3, T5 and T7. And that's something you wish to see because I didn't expect that. So here are the read and write speeds if I connect them to my Intel MacBook Pro. And well, everybody knows already that on M1 MacBooks, they work slower, no surprise here. But if I connect the SSDs to the studio display, then in case of the Intel, we'll have a drop in the speeds, and in the case of M1, we'll have a boost in the speeds, which is quite unexpected and might be important to you if you rely on the external storage a lot. You can also charge the devices via the USB-C cables on the back and by far this is the most expensive charging station that I ever had. If the screen is not connected to any Mac, then you can easily charge a laptop and a couple of phones. The laptop was getting 92 watts and both iPhones consumed 20 watts each. When the display is connected to a Mac and you charge two iPhones, they get between 8 to 12 watts each. But I guess a more common situation will be a laptop attached to the studio display and just one iPhone charging. For 12 Pro Max I was able to get half of the battery in 47 minutes and a full charge in 2 hours and 13 minutes. Of course this consumes energy through the non-detachable power cord, which is not that long by the way, so I've measured the power consumption. When charging a laptop and with a brightness set to its maximum, it consumes up to 130 watt. Without charging, it's about 55 watt. And if charging extra devices, it can go up to 185 watt. And here are the values for my LG display just to compare, and it actually consumed quite a bit less, I should say. Speaking of an LG screen, a lot of reviewers compared the studio display to an LG Ultrafine 5K, and it makes sense, they both have 5K, right? But I think a lot of us have a cheaper 4K LG screens at home. Mine is LG UL850-W. Gosh, who gives them those names anyway? It has a 27-inch IPS panel, 4K resolution, USB-C connection, and they also claim that it has an HDR support. There are a lot of modifications across the world and LG keeps updating them yearly, so you probably have one of these, but the screen quality is relatively the same across the models. So let's compare those just for fun. It's a personal opinion which can be different from yours, but I don't think that the image quality differs that much. Just for a screen that I use for coding, web surfing and Skyping, LG is more than enough. And after color calibration with the professional software and hardware, it is great for my photo and video editing. So if you have a MacBook with a decent webcam, nice speakers and an LG 4K screen, then I don't really think that you need the studio display. Probably some color correction if you do photos or videos professionally and you're good to go. Well, of course there are some benefits, like the scaling is better and 5K resolution is better than 4K and the brightness is a little bit better, a little bit higher. But well, I could buy four 4K LG screens for the same price and like those small benefits, they're not that huge, but that's my personal opinion. Of course, as a geek who likes nicely built stuff, I would surely buy this if I had an unlimited budget, but unfortunately I don't have it. And it wouldn't be a geek stable channel if I wouldn't try to connect different stuff to this screen. So let's try. For some reason, Apple didn't include the latest iPad mini in the list of compatible devices, but as you can see, it works totally fine. What's interesting is that once the iPad is connected, its own speakers are replaced by the speakers of the screen. Also, if you go deep into the settings, you'll be able to find the screen as a connected device. 
and from there you'll be able to change the brightness. Oh, and if you have anything connected to the USB-C ports of the display, then it will be working with the iPad as well. The storage works, the USB-A hub works, even the Ethernet works. Probably the only thing that doesn't work is the audio jack to USB-C adapter because the speakers are taken by the studio display. Now, this is a very expensive screen that has only a Thunderbolt cable. So can we actually connect anything that has an HDMI port to the studio display? The answer is yes, but we need a special adapter. It has to be an active adapter having an HDMI on one side and the USB-C female on the other side. And usually an active adapter has a huge break around HDMI. And in the description, look for it saying actually active adapter and the support of 4K60 and DisplayPort 1.2. This will guarantee that it will work with the studio display. And with the help of this small thing, I was able to play PS4 games on this screen. Unfortunately, I couldn't enjoy the speakers, so I had to connect my headphones to the gamepad. And also I could use Apple TV with the screen. But again, the sound was going through my AirPods because this is purely a video only connection. I also have this lightning to an HDMI adapter. So I thought, why not to connect the iPhone or an older iPad to the screen? First of all, the standard USB-C to lightning cable won't work. I've tried, but this one actually works. Just one adapter to another adapter to the cable. And this is something only Apple could do. Again, we get just an image, no sound, but good to know that it works. And even the LumaFusion could treat it as a second screen. So you could do some video editing here. And now let's see how the pseudo display works along with the Windows world. So if you have Parallels installed on your machine, then your Windows environment has access to the microphone and speakers. You just set them in your settings and that's it. It also has access to the webcam, but of course there is no center stage option there. If we switch to an Intel Mac and launch Windows via Bootcamp, then we'll have the same experience for the microphone and speakers. They're just yet another sound device. And the camera works fine, but with no center stage available. You can also do a rotation from the screen settings if you need to, but no brightness adjustment. It's all automatic, which is quite strange. I also have this Intel Compute Stick with Windows 10 installed, so I could add another adapter and another adapter and I could make it work with the studio display. But since it's purely a video connection, I won't be getting any microphone, speakers or camera support. So this is the studio display on a Visa mount. We've talked about all the specs and scenarios, but let's cover the main one. Is it worth buying this screen? And if yes, then in which configuration? Well, if I were to buy one, I'd go with the Visa option, of course, because of the versatility. I could change the tail to the height and rotate the screen whenever I want. Speaking of the screen coating, if you work with the dark UI and your workspace is quite bright, then do consider the nano texture glass. It may affect the sharpness of the image, but it may help you to avoid the reflections. For example, I have a standard glossy option and while looking at a black background during a sunny day, I could see my own reflection, which can be distracting. But I usually work with the colorful stuff, so it didn't bother me that much, but I think it's worth mentioning. So this is a very expensive device, too expensive. And do you know why the AirPods Max are here? Because they both share quite a lot. AirPods Max is a great device, but when it was released, it was overpriced like crazy. And it was also on a high demand. You had to wait months to get it. Now you can easily find these and with a significant discount. And for that price, it's a good deal. So the studio display is also overpriced and also on high demand. I would wait and hopefully it will hit a sale and they will also start selling the refurbished options. And then, it will be a great deal too. 
but buying it now is quite a luxury. All right, it was a long video full of information and I hope it was helpful. And if you have any other questions that were not covered, feel free to write them down in the comments. It's been Alex and see you at the Geeks table. Bye-bye.